Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to another episode of the Michelle Fondon author vlog. My name is Michelle Fondon and I'm going to show you two of my published books today. The Wheel of Healing with Ayurveda, An Easy Guide to a Healthy Lifestyle and Enlightened Medicine, Your Power to Get Well Now, An Integrative Approach to Healing the Seven Deadly lifestyle diseases. And today we are going to talk about the epidemic. Yes, the epidemic on loneliness and social isolation. I did not even know this was an epidemic until I started writing a blog about it and I was digging deep into research. So we are going to adjust that topic. I'm going to tell you why we're adjusting this topic. And if you are interested, please do stay tuned. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thank you for subscribing below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications, and thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. I do tarot and astrology readings. You can book that at my website, michellefondenauthor.com, and please do subscribe to my brand new channel dedicated to astrology and tarot called at Transcendent Astrology and Tarot, on YouTube. The link will be below and the first video will be coming out on March 20th. So here we go on this topic of loneliness. Now this first came to me because I had been treating this topic for the twin flame journey. If you have come to this channel through that, and if you are on a spiritual journey, the twin flame journey, and you had experienced bouts of loneliness or are still experiencing bouts of loneliness, I do have a video for you. I'm going to post that right here. So it came to me then. Furthermore, when I coach my one-on-one -on -one clients, so yes, I do readings, tarot, group coaching, and one-on-one -on -one coaching. And when I am coaching clients, I often talk to them about self-love, self-respect, self-healing. And through that comes the conversation to get away from the fixation on one singular person, which is really codependent in nature, that it is really super important that you turn to family, friends, social connections and hobbies to be able to disperse that energy a little bit and have more connections which are valuable to you so that you're not just focusing on your romantic connection, right? Because a lot of women that I have noticed, this used to be me, by the way, guys, this absolutely positively used to be me. A lot of women get caught up and they get fixated on their primary relationship with a romantic partner, and then they neglect their other relationships, notably the relationships with friends and colleagues. And so the major problem I have when trying to convince my clients that it's very healthy to look outside of the relationship for valuable connections, I get the feedback I don't have the time. I don't have the energy. I don't know where to meet people. Where am I going to go? I prefer to spend my time with my romantic partner. I prefer to spend time with my kids, which is well and good. That is a social connection, by the way. But rest assured, your kids have other social connections that are not you if you are a parent. This video came because I talked to so many women in particular. Now, this is not unique to women. I know men experience this as well, but a lot of times it's the women who put all of their effort and energy into their romantic relationship. And as a result, their friendships suffer, their social connections suffer. And we're going to talk about loneliness and social isolation. And let's talk about the differences. So this report, I just have a printed page of the report. This report came out by the Surgeon General in 2023. Not sure which month, but it says our epidemic of loneliness and isolation 2023, the U.S. Surgeon General's advisory on healing 
effects of social connection and community. It is a roughly an 80 page document. I have read probably 25 to 30 pages of that document. The last part of the document is actually just all the references and all the authors of the document. So I believe the document itself is probably around 63 pages. I looked last night, but it's around 63 pages. So I'm about halfway through, but I actually browsed from beginning to end to kind of look at what is inside of it. Last night, I spent about an hour reading it. And so social connection and um, loneliness are interrelated, but they are different, if that makes sense. So let's start with loneliness. Loneliness is an internal feeling that you feel inside. And if you are feeling lonely, you could be surrounded by people but still feel lonely, okay? So you could be surrounded by people, you could be working at a workplace, you could be living at home with family, and you could even be married and still feel lonely because that feeling of loneliness has to do with the value of the connection that you feel with the other people in your life. So if you feel there is no valuable connection, meaning for you, because everybody is totally different in how they connect, how they feel validated, accepted, how they feel in receiving love, right? Because that's really important is how do we receive love? And if the people that you're living with feel like just being in the same household is love. It's not necessarily what is valuable for you. So loneliness is that internal feeling that you can feel whether you are with people or not with people. Social isolation is literally what it says. It's not having the availability to be with other people. Now, there could be so many reasons for this, but not having the availability to be with other people. Now, this could be self-inflicted and it's not an all or nothing thing. The way the research report describes it is that it is a continuum. So at some aspects of our lives or some time periods in our lives, we may feel more or less socially connected to others. And so when we're feeling social isolation, there could be a number of factors that go into it. But basically, social isolation is just feeling like you are alone and that you don't have a lot of friends or valuable connections outside of your living place, your residence, if you will. That is something that you can have direct control over. And we're going to talk about ways in which you could get socially connected and why you might want to, right? Because here is the thing. One of the things that I found out, because I knew this, but I didn't know this. One of the things that I found out in reading this research on the epidemic is that it gravely affects your health. It gravely affects your health. It is insane. So I'm going to read like a statistic and it says social connection increases odds of survival by 50%. Social connection increases odds of survival by 50%. Meaning if you are not socially connected, you have a high mortality rate. And in fact, I'm going to put up a chart right here because I was so shocked when I saw this chart that I felt like I needed to read it to you and show you because, okay, here's why. Let's backtrack for just a minute here. Last week, I produced a video on the problem with excess in this country and of course, worldwide, globally as well. So I produced a video on the problem with obesity, with addictions, and people just having this sense of what I called gluttony, if you will, and the grave problems that it presents, not only socially, physically, mentally, emotionally, right? In all aspects of life. 
All right, when I read this on loneliness and social isolation, I was a bit shocked. I'm gonna tell you that right now. I was a bit shocked. It says lacking, and here's the chart up so you can see it. Lacking social connection is as dangerous as smoking up to 15 cigarettes per day. That's crazy. If you look at the mortality rates, lacking social connection is much higher than smoking, drinking alcohol in excess, physical inactivity, obesity, and air pollution. Like, I don't know why air pollution is up there. No idea. But it says lacking social connection. And this is mortality comparison odds. I don't know how to read this chart, but you can clearly see by the graph that it is further along than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. And further along, I'd say about twice the length in mortality rate than drinking six alcoholic drinks daily. And it is much further along than physical inactivity as a problem for mortality. And obesity, it's about three times the amount of the problem of obesity and about, I don't know, six or seven times the amount of air pollution. That actually shocked me. I understand that we are social creatures. I understand we need each other. If you look back to the studies from like the 1960s about infants, human infants, who they did experiments on human infants, I know, super unethical, but they did studies on human infants that were in incubators and they took those infants that were like not touched versus infants that were touched. And the ones that were not touched had failure to thrive and most of them died. Like very unethical study, but there was a study on human touch and human interaction. So that study was done and that was for infants and babies, but this is for everyone, right? Children, teenagers, and adults as well. It is so important that we socially connect with one another and this has become totally problematic in our modern world, really problematic. So I'm just gonna read to you another statistic and then we'll just have a quick discussion about this because I feel like, especially for women, now again, I'm saying this to you because 90% of the people that I coach are women and 10% are men. I know there are men who are suffering from loneliness and social isolation, but women tend to bear the brunt of it a lot more. And here's why, because a lot of women bear children and so if they are single moms or divorced moms, they tend to bear the greater brunt of the childcare work. And because of that, they have less and less time for social connections, especially if they're single moms and they're working. I know that was the case for me when I was a single mom working. I had like zero time to have a social connection. That being said, let me read this statistic to you. In person contact. Now this is not unique to the years mentioned. It's just a general downward trend. So in-person contact decreased from 30 hours a month to 10 hours a month between the years of 2003 and 2020. Now, again, we all know what happened in 2020. And yes, 2020 was a humongous problem for loneliness and social isolation. Hello, I will say that right now. I was living alone at the time. My son was stuck over in Virginia and I was going bonkers out of my mind for the first two months of that global pandemic. I was going literally out of my mind because of the loneliness. So believe me, I know. But there were other statistics that the study mentioned during the, the pandemic, especially between 2020 and 2021, that were some were extremely negative, but some were extremely positive. So as a global whole, it wasn't equal for everyone. So for example, it mentioned that first responders and people who had to work were actually a lot more socially connected because they were kind of like all in it together, having to work 
during a global pandemic when the rest of the world had to stay at home. So they had their little group, if you will. So there was that social connection. Another thing it mentioned is that volunteering and serving others. So the first responders, a lot of them were like serving others or felt a sense of purpose during the global pandemic. And so they actually had the sense of belongingness increase. Of course, people who were stuck at home with dysfunctional and abusive families or mentally ill parents or mentally ill spouses, of course, that was very problematic for those people. But for example, people that worked outside the home that could not spend time with their kids, those bonds increased during the global pandemic. So as you can see, it was a little bit of a mixed bag during those years of anomaly. But when we're talking about in-person contact, the fact that between 2003 and 2020, it decreased by 20 hours a month, that is humongous. That is a lot. Another statistic that I read was that only 18% of American adults feel a sense of belonging to their community. Now, the community could be a lot of different things. The community could be a church, a synagogue, a mosque. It could be any other religious organization. It could be a neighborhood organization. It could be a community or a town or a city. So there's a lot of different aspects of community, but only 18% of all Americans feel a sense of belonging to their community. So as you can see, these statistics are getting a little bit grim in the way of people feeling more and more lonely, more and more socially isolated. Another statistic that, this is the last one, promise, that I wanted to mention is that today in 2020, well, when the study was done in 2023, so it's now 2024, but 29% of all U.S. adults live alone. And that is more than ever. Again, that number is also increasing. So 29% of all U.S. adults live alone. If you are in that category where you live alone, where you feel lonely, where you feel socially isolated, it is more important than ever that we get out there and we make social connections with others because our health and our viability actually depends on it. And again, it wasn't until reading this research on the epidemic of loneliness and isolation that it like opened my eyes even more to the importance of connection. <sighs> it's such a hard one, right? It's such a hard one. Let's talk a little bit about like connecting via social media, like the internet. So that one is also a mixed bag. The internet can actually make us feel more connected when we get to talk to family and friends online who live really far away. So if they live across the world, if they live across the country, then doing video chat or staying connected with them on social media can actually help that sense of connection. However, the overall arching theme is that those that spend more time on social media, and I think the number was like more than two hours a day, feel lonelier than those who spend less than 30 minutes a day on social media. Even though we have this ability to connect with others via social media and the internet, those that spend more time doing this feel more isolated and more lonely. And one of the reasons, especially for young people, is that air of comparison with others who have like seemingly perfect lives because they're posting perfect photos on the social media sites. They're posting their perfect stories on the social media sites and it gives the illusion to others that they have a picture perfect life when we all know that reality is very, very different than that. 
I came to the conclusion and I, you know, I've been coming to this conclusion actually for several years now in this book, Enlightened Medicine, Your Power to Get Well Now. I actually did write about loneliness and this was before the Surgeon General's report, of course, because this book was published in 2018. I did write about loneliness. I do, I do write in both of those books on the importance of relationship with others, right? And not just a romantic relationship. That is also important, but relationships that extend far beyond the traditional romantic connection. And I believe the number was around six or seven different avenues of social connection. Oh my God, that's a lot of avenues for today's day and age, isn't it? So what might that look like? It might look like belonging to a club, like let's say you golf and you belong to a golfing club or you belong to a library book reading group or you belong to a neighborhood program where you get together with your neighbors to decide on certain things. It could look like having a girl's night out or a boy's night out. It could look like a lot of different types of relationships that contribute to your sense of well-being and connectedness in your personal relationships. Now, here's what I'm going to say that's like not like nobody's going to like this one, but, you know, it's just another thing to add to your to-do list (laughs) is that given those statistics, it is far more important, and I can't believe I'm saying this. I can't believe I'm saying this. I'm the health and fitness guru. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it is far more important for you to make sure that you are socially connected to people in person and to have the quality of relationships that you desire than even drinking no alcohol or eating well, right? It sounds crazy that I'm saying this, but the numbers are super clear on this one that the quality of your relationships, the quality of your social connections will determine your health and will determine how long you live because I believe it was said, I think I said this in the beginning of the video, but I believe it was said that people who do not have social connections or are depleted of their social connections or feel lonely, socially isolated, they have a 29, I believe it's 29% decrease in lifespan. 29% decrease in lifespan. That's crazy to me. That is totally crazy to me. Like I knew it was so important. I just didn't know how important it was. So there have been periods in my life where I have felt socially isolated. There have been periods in my life where I have felt very lonely. And a lot of that is my own fault. A lot of that is my own fault because I did not make my friendships a priority. I put a lot of weight into my children. I put a lot of weight into my romantic relationships. I did not put a lot of weight into friendships and social engagements, meaning like joining a club that I regularly attend once a month, twice a month, right? Because we need that variety in order to sustain us in a way that's going to make our lives feel fulfilling and feel like we're socially connected to people And as I mentioned, volunteering is an amazing way to feel connected. And in fact, it seems that there's an even better boost to volunteering than any other type of social connection. It's really odd, but the studies have shown that giving of your time to a cause, to a person, it actually increases your life satisfaction it increases your sense of connectedness um, even more than any of the other ones. And so if you can get out there and volunteer for some type of organization that you feel connected to, that the, the satisfaction from that alone is going to just greatly increase your chances 
of having a happier, healthier, and more fulfilling life and longer life, of course, right? One of the things that I found that I have been using for years now, and in fact, in earnest since about 2020, and really have made a concerted effort to do this is through the site called meetup.com. And for those of you that are unfamiliar with meetup.com, it is a site where people can host groups on any given topic. And for example, if you like knitting and you would like to join a knitting group, chances are there's a knitting group on meetup.com. So you can just sign up, it's free for you if you were a participant. It's not free for those who host the meetup. I think it's something like $200 a year to be able to host a group through the meetup site. But in order to be a participant, it doesn't cost anything unless if the group wants you to chip in a dollar or two toward the dues, if you will. But you can join and then when they have meetups, they're called, which are basically like gatherings. When they have meetups, then you can attend those meetups. And for me, it has been a lifesaver for social connection, especially since I moved to California in 2018, mid 2018, and I did not know anybody. And for me, it was one of those situations where I started working outside of the home right away. I was living by myself. My son, my youngest son, was in Virginia at the time. And so I did feel very isolated and I did feel very lonely. And I even felt lonely within my job because I didn't have friends at my job. I had acquaintances at my job, but I didn't have meaningful connections at my job. So that became problematic. But Meetup really helped me to meet a lot of different people through different interest groups. So during the pandemic, for example, I joined a lot of hiking groups. And through those hiking groups, I was able to create connections and make friends. And today I even host meetups about once or twice a week. And that is super helpful for that sense of social connection. It also makes me feel really good to be able to provide that to help others feel connected as well. So meetup.com is a great way to do that. Volunteering is another great way or just joining different groups. The libraries, the public libraries, they have groups you can join. They have groups, they have reading groups, they have book club groups. There are so many things that you could join through your public library that don't cost a penny. Look into your neighborhood. Is there a neighborhood watch you could join? Is there a neighborhood group you could join? So just think about all of these things. And I know it's so much easier in today's world. It is so much easier to sit back, relax with your laptop on your couch and not worry about the effort of getting dressed, going out, meeting people, meeting people you don't know yet. It's very hard to meet people for some people, right? Especially for those that are the more introverted types. But I hope I've convinced you that it's the only way that we can feel more connected and also ensure our better health, right? It was interesting because, and this is, and I'll close the video off with this little story of mine. When I was going through Al-Anon family groups back in 2016 to 2017, I believe it was, I had a sponsor who this lady was tough. I really did not like her. She was very tough. She was a lady in her 70s who had been through the program for a really long time. And she decided that she was a sponsor for the, you know, many years. She decided she would sponsor me. And I was like not having it because I didn't want to hear what she had to say, especially about the person I was dating. But one piece of advice that really stuck with me was she said, you really need to have about five or six different people on call. Now she was saying even men, right? She said, even men, she's like, I don't care if you're dating this alcoholic guy, have some men, some women on call that you can call at any given time 
to go out and do something that you want to do. So she said, you should really have at least five or six people that you can call, you know, you see the latest movie, the latest Marvel movie that comes out and you're like, hey, I want to go see that movie, but I don't want to go alone. Then you call this one person and you say, hey, let's go to the movies together. Or there's a new restaurant that just opens up in your town. You're like, hey, let's just go. Let's, let's go tonight. Get dressed. Get in your car. Let's go to this restaurant. And I felt like, even though I was resistant to it at the time, because I was like, I don't even know five people outside of my boyfriend and my kids. Like, I don't, I don't even know five people. How could I do this? But it was the smartest piece of advice that I had ever received <laughs> during that time. Now, do I have five people I could call if I wanted to go out? I really don't have five people on speed dial. I probably have one or two, but I do have my meetup group and I do a lot of different things with the meetup group that I wouldn't feel good doing alone. So I have that as well. That really satisfies the Surgeon General's recommendation of having six or seven different avenues of social connection to make you feel connected in various aspects of your life. And again, we used to do this pretty naturally, right? Before the internet, we used to do this pretty naturally because we even had to like go physically to places to do things, right? There was no option to not go to the DMV because there was no internet. So you actually had to go and wait in line. There was no option for a self checkout line. You had to stand in line at the grocery store and wait your turn. And there was often an opportunity to strike up a conversation with a stranger, right? You had to pay the toll when you were on the road to an actual person and not a machine. And so again, there was an opportunity for conversation and human interaction. Now there are so few opportunities to have a conversation with a human being and have that social interaction that we feel more and more and more and more socially isolated. I hope this perspective was helpful for you. And I would like to hear your feedback. Have you been feeling more and more lonely or socially isolated throughout the years than perhaps when you were younger or a younger adult? Have you figured out ways in which you can socially connect to people and feel that you're part of something meaningful? I would love to hear your feedback. So I wanna thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for subscribing to my channel below. Click on the bell, scroll up to all for all notifications. Thank you for giving the video a thumbs up. Thank you for sharing this video with others who could use a little bit of help when they're feeling lonely and socially isolated to get some tips. And I will see you guys real soon. Bye-bye.